In the Netherlands, a lot of things are organized pretty well, but it's also the world champion in biodiversity loss. So how do you make sure farmers get paid for the extra biodiversity they create, or better, facilitate? I can hear you think, credits, but they are very hard to measure and not even there yet. Today we explore a company that basically figured out a way to do it. By taking native plants, weeds, or better ingredients formerly known as weeds, autochthonous plants that want to grow and turn them into very, very tasty drinks. Herbal teas, kombuchas, fermented teas, and even pasta. Paying farmers more per square meter than anything else they grow. How? First flavor. This has to taste better or as good as the drinks from Monoland. Second, really super desirable branding. Apparently nature restoring drinks sell better than biodiversity restoring. Who knew that? How do you know? By test, test, test. In short, making biodiversity super, super tasty. Of course, none of this is easy, but as we find out, they have so many other products in mind and there are so many possibilities to eat and drink your local biodiversity. This is the Investing in Regenerative Agriculture and Food podcast, Investing as if the Planet Mattered, where we talk to the pioneers in the regenerative food and agriculture space to learn more on how to put our money to work to regenerate soil, people, local communities, and ecosystems while making an appropriate and fair return. Why my focus on soil and regeneration? Because so many of the pressing issues we face today have their roots in how we treat our land and our sea, grow our food, what we eat, wear and consume. And it's time that we as investors, big and small, and consumers start paying much more attention to the dirt slash soil underneath our feet. To make it easy for fans to support our work, we launched our membership community. And so many of you have joined us as a member. Thank you. If our work created value for you, and if you have the means, and only if you have the means, consider joining us. Find out more on gumroad.com slash investing in Regen Ag. That is gumroad.com slash investing in Regen Ag. Or find the link below. Welcome. To another episode, we have a lot of background noise. I'm going to say call it noise, but it's not because there's a beautiful bird concert going around. I'm very happy with the weather as well because there was um, predicted a lot of rain. I th- it might be coming in the afternoon. That might um, change some of the recordings in the afternoon. But this morning, we're very fortunate to be able to walk the land a bit with Matthijs, co-founder of Wilderland, and uh, we're going to walk a bit of Wilderland that used <laughs> to be uh, a monoculture. Uh, golf course, as you, you called it, you claimed it uh, before. <laughs> so, but let's start with a, a personal question we always love to ask. What made you start Wilderland, of course, but also made you think and, and smell and taste biodiversity and how to make it tasty, because that's uh, sort of your, your, your tagline. Most yeah. of your awake hours of the, of the day, let's say, how, how did you roll into the, the biodiversity space? Yeah, oh wow. Uh, First of all, thanks for having me and us in this uh, podcast. Great honor. Uh, yeah, what, what, what made me go into this field? Um, yeah, good. I, I think it was Common Land. And Dan and I started uh, Wilderland like five years ago. And I think eight years ago, I learned about Common Land. Mm-hmm. And it was like for me like, wow, you can have a business and create natural capital. How cool is that? At a scale as well. I like the landscape. Landscape restoration at big scale. We're going to interview Willem, the founder, soon. uh, With some of his colleagues we've interviewed before. I will will link them below. And um, so it might be out around this time. But anyway, Common Land is definitely go to the website. If you haven't heard about it. (laughs) Look, and and there was on the Dutch television, there's a a, a documentary series called Tegelicht. Mm -hmm. And they made two episodes about... uh, Common land and landscape restoration. It's called uh, Groen Goud or Green Gold. Yeah. Uh, and that was a huge inspiration as well because in, in that series you see like degraded land becoming lush and green again. And then uh, learning about that there's like a uh, holistic business case model behind that. And that for me was like, okay. I, I want to do something with this. What were you doing at the time? Uh, at the time I was um, working at a creative project management firm, uh, doing all so- cor- sorts of projects for big uh, multinationals in the Netherlands, but also internationally. 
uh, which for me was, uh, I always wanted to become an entrepreneur or had uh, like mm -hmm. all these side hustles and was doing all kinds of stuff. And I thought, yeah, I want to create a business for myself. Always interested in uh, the field of sustainability. But uh, while thinking, so I worked at that company to gain experience, network, and, and, and some professional skills. Uh, but while working there, I was always thinking, okay, what, 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 what will be the thing I, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll start my own business in? And what I, what I found out is that, um, also, uh, especially working for all these big corporations and multinationals, I, I thought like, yeah, sustainability is, is only about doing less bad in this field. So I, I wasn't inspired by that. And then while thinking of what, 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 what kind of business, I, I did this thought experiment. So what if it will become a huge success? What if the product, service, whatever I'm bringing mm -hmm. to the world, uh, let's say the whole world will start uh, using it. Will it be a solution or a new problem? And, and by doing that all the time, like oh, this product, yeah, um, more garbage. Or, or maybe this this type of food of oh, more monocultures if, if it's if it really scales so a good example like let's say uh, biological tea from or organic organic tea from Sri Lanka yes it's more sustainable than conventional tea but it will be a new problem if the whole world starts drinking organic tea from Sri Lanka because eh, more monoculture less rainforest um, so I and all the time I every time I did this, Ex thought experiment with, with ideas. I was like demotivated. Like, oh no, I cannot do this because it's, and that because it will be more garbage, more monoculture, whatever. Um, and then when I learned about Commonland, it was like, wow. If 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 your starting point from a business point of view can be uh, creating natural capital or or restoring nature, biodiversity, whatever, then the bigger you grow as a business, the more nature returns. And then it was like, wow, how cool is that? Um, so then I was like, okay, yeah, as if, if, if regeneration is the starting point. Uh, and then I was like, I want to create a business uh, in that field. And um, then coincidentally, I, I, I walked into Dan again. We, we met uh, uh, three years before that because he was an intern at the company I worked. Mm -hmm. And then I, I heard that he started working at Commonland. And I was already, oh, wow, <laughs> are you working at Commonland? And then we, we met again on uh, King's Day and I was like, yeah, I want to start a business. And he said, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we decided to, to, to uh, start a business in the Netherlands with like inspired by the common land model. Um, and then uh, we, we, we quit our jobs. We had no clue what to do, <laughs> but we, were, we, we, we had the feeling this feels right. Let's, let's, let's dive into this field of uh, yeah, landscape restoration, nature recovery, regeneration, whatever. Um, and then what? Like you, you. And then what? Yeah. yeah then quit then, your job, which we, is like going from seeing something on TV to to walking into an old colleague or ex-colleague, yeah. and both venting this idea of I want to start something, which I think yeah. many people have, but then actually quitting first of all yeah. um, is is a big but yes and no because. We're in a fortunate position. Like you probably would find something else. Like if it, yeah. the worst. Yeah, we thought we'll take a worst? year, and if 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 we, and the we fact cannot that you find can take any, a year, yeah. and probably we'll find another job in and some, do some other some freelance concept. and work yeah. uh, on the side. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So then we started. So in the Netherlands, you have Weiland, mm -hmm. which is uh, like um, the common land, common land uh, project north of Amsterdam. Yes. The landscape. Yeah. 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 Um, and 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 of course, Dan. We, we we had this whole common land Weiland network. So we went to them and we said like, okay, we want to <laughs> create a business. Um, and we thought maybe we can become this business developer because both Dan and I had this background a bit like entrepreneurial. And we thought, uh, and we have like from studies, a background in psychology and business administration, yeah. nothing uh, uh, ecology or agro or whatever. But we thought maybe we can create a business. And we had this already this, this super ambitious idea. Maybe we can become the regenerative Unilever. <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, let's start. Uh, and then, so we started talking with farmers. Um, just like, okay. Um, how, how did that first one go? Like, how do you, you sit at the kitchen table, how do you, do you still remember the first farmer you talked to? Yes. For, for what turned into Wilderland, etc. But like the first one you sat at his or her kitchen table, what, what, what was it seen like? Yeah, so the, the, the cool thing was that a lot of farmers were really open to talk with us about like, I, new ideas or, or and what what 
what yeah so we it was like that what struck me was that the most farms are like yeah i want to be as sustainable as possible i would love to and yes the the future will not be as we do it today but what that future looked like we don't know but yes we're open so they were really open because we said like maybe we can find uh, this we maybe we can find market and what are your ideas and then they that they were so open to talk with us about all these these that because was, your idea was farmers wouldn't be open or your your, your yeah, we had no clue we never yeah. talked to yeah. a farmer in in this way and just uh, uh and uh, so they were really open taking the time with us to, to think about like uh, so so we on one hand we talk to farmers so what what things do you see what what opportunities do you and then but most farmers that they were into go yeah we should do something with dairy or meat and we were like eh, there, there's already so much dairy yeah, and yeah, so yeah. much meat so but yeah okay and we talk to to ecologists so like okay what we, is needed yeah, yeah what is needed we want to do something which uh, that that contributes to nature biodiversity what what should we do and they said, yeah, uh, less monocultures and more native plants. And so, okay, let's, uh, okay. Uh, and we went back to this farmer, okay. We, we, we heard. Uh, yeah, we yeah. heard uh, uh, so more your, native plants. And so your ryegrass monoculture might be. Yes, yeah. How can we change that? Yeah. Yeah. And also yeah, when we started, we also looked at the Netherlands. So, so, and, and then from a nature perspective, if you look into the Netherlands, like what, what, is, what is going on? So we're one of the best in the world when it comes to agriculture or intensive, yeah. uh, ag but we're uh, world champion biodiversity loss. And I was like, okay. Uh, you uh, never hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So uh, that's definitely the, but then biodiversity is such an, a big thing or a big theme as well. Like where do you even start? Yeah, so it's, it's too abstract. And, and we thought, yeah. how can we turn biodiversity into a business model for farmers and for ourselves? So that was- So you went credits? No, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but, and then we thought, uh, how, how do we do that? And for then, the farmers and for, for yeah, yeah. especially for farmers, yeah. because in theory, like 65% of the Netherlands is managed by farmers. So in theory, if you can change their way of working into a into a model that the more biodiversity they allow on their land, the more they earn. Wow! Then in theory, you could you could could. Uh, uh, have a huge impact mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. biodiversity. So that was, so we thought like, okay, we need to uh, work. So it, it needs to work for the farmers. It needs to be integrated into their, their business model as well. Uh, so then, yeah, the ecologist said more native plants and less monoculture. So we went back to these farmers and said, okay, we're hearing that uh, we need to allow more native. And then they say, yeah, th th those are weeds. We don't want weeds. We cannot make any money with weeds because the, 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 uh, we all, that we already don't earn any money <laughs> or yeah. uh, and so we need to we need every square meter of our land to be uh, super productive it's been, uh, the most densely populated country in the world with a super intensive uh, agricultural super industry super expensive land super expensive so then every square meter and and there is the tension between uh, uh, produ production and, and biodiversity uh, because then yeah so from the perspective of a bee, there's no flower to land on in the Netherlands because um, uh, farmers cannot make any money on uh, dandelions or, or plantain or chamomile. Um, so yeah, these farmers said, yeah, they, those are weeds. We cannot make any money with weeds. And then we went back to these ecologists, like what kind of plants, what kind of native plants are we talking about? Eh? You say native, what's that? And then they said, yeah, it's uh, chamomile, nettle, plantain, dandelion. And we said, oh, whoa, whoa, you said chamomile, that sounds like tea. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can make tea. And then we thought, okay, but this is too simple. We thought like, okay, probably there, 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 there's already uh, a lot of chamomile coming from the Netherlands. And then we, we, we d dig into, or we did some research on, on herbal tea. And we found out that the, most of the chamomile in the big, big herbal tea brands is coming from Egypt or India. And then we thought, wow, so okay. chamomile grows like weed in the Netherlands. And you can make tea, but all kinds of other products from it. And then we saw that, that a lot of other, like dandelion, plantain, also are common ingredients in herbal tea. And then we thought, oh, wow, if we can uh, sell local herbal tea to people in the Netherlands, then we can uh, transform these weeds into a crop. Mm -hmm. And if, if we can make 
uh, crops from weeds, then we can pay farmers for uh, um, yeah, we for can biodiversity, for biodiversity, for their weeds. Yeah, yeah, for their weeds. And so then that's how we started. We thought, oh, well, let's start with uh, with tea. But oh, and then from then we said, Let, let's start with tea, and maybe we'll 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 find out all kind of other products. And um, a few years later, we have a whole range of products, all made from yeah local native. Uh, weeds, plants, yeah. weeds, <laughs> we but also, weeds anymore, uh, but also like not, for, uh, yeah, formerly known as weeds. Yeah, yeah. so we call it unherbal tea. <laughs> um, and, and so now, like, how many years ago was like when did you plant your first crop or your when did you harvest your first weeds? Yeah, so five years ago in January, we we, we got the idea of of of, of uh, tea and we started and then the so five years ago, yeah, we started with the first seeds. Uh, and a few farmers that, that said like, okay, this, this idea is so crazy, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll And were they I'll scared? Like, how do you find your first farmers? Because I think also a lot of the notion around the, the plant formerly known as weed yeah. is that it's gonna affect my crop next to it, it's gonna yeah. uh, spread, uh, it's like somehow this negative charge with it is quite strong. Yes. So how do you find the first, I mean, now it's different because you have a lot of data, you can yeah. show a lot of things, but those first, three, five, whatever the yeah. number was that in that year, five years ago, how do you sit at your kitchen table and say, we're gonna plant something <laughs> yeah. that you're actively trying to not have on your yeah, farm and kill? Yeah. yeah, because we were talking about it from a business perspective. Ah, and we're gonna pay for it. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna pay for it. And then they're like, okay, yeah. Uh, but, and that's also because we, we had this, uh, we, we knew the people from Weiland and they have like a whole network of, let's say the more uh, progressive or, or farmers open, that are, yeah. are open to, to uh, also like they, that want to in some way uh, work towards more regenerative uh, farming practices. So that was a huge benefit for us that we, we via them, we could, we, we, yeah, we set a table at farmers that are, were already willing. But because we said like, it, it, we want to pay you for this and it, it needs to be, the, the, the income needs to be higher than you earn now per square meter. Um, and that's fascinating. So just to give a, a mental picture like for people, I mean, everybody's listening. Like, what kind of farm was that, the first one? Classic dairy, like what should we imagine yeah, when, so we the, look, when we think about where you planted this chamomile or where you planted yeah. this mix? So the first farm that was uh, Hank, <laughs> uh, and he's a like, yeah, classic dairy farm, uh, organic already. Um, and actually he told us a lot about the benefits of herbs for, for cows and whatever. But still, he, he was an organic farm. But he said, and but it was was monoculture, classic organic, classic yeah. organic, uh, classic classic pasture. Um, and there we uh, we we uh, we yeah we bought the seeds. And on the day we and he said, do you guys even know how to sow? We said, we have no clue. <laughs> Tell us. Hey. Like on the side, like you <laughs> yeah, should, so should imagine the, yeah. the classic pasture, and then where you planted, like not in the middle. I'm imagining. No, no, it was on, but. Most farms, they all, sometimes it's on the side, sometimes it's in, next to a, a pot for the cows or whatever. Every farmer has some area where anyway. they say like, ah, okay, try it there because the ground is not super nice. Yeah, uh, um, and so that was also part of our model. We wanted to start really small because yeah, you can say to a farmer, okay, look, uh, watch this uh, biggest little farm video. This is the future. Good <laughs> luck. Good yeah. luck. And then most farms are like, Ah, we love that, but how? Um, what What is the first step? And so we thought we need to ma find a model where the first step like, is a super small, easy baby step. So we started with like thousand square meters. We said, like, we'll, we'll pay for the seats um, and we'll give you- a, And you rent a, the land basically yeah, we from rent, them. We and rent land the land was anyway unproductive in a corner somewhere. Yes. So yeah. this is pure yeah. extra money. Pure extra money and easy, so no regret. Uh, easy to no start. risk. No risk. Yes, we will take the risk. And for us, that was a model. Just l let's start. Let's see what works. How do works. you sow it at first? Thousand square meters. Like how does that? By hand. <laughs> uh, and then we, we uh, first we thought like yeah, if you sow the things you sow, they'll they'll come up, right? That's that's how it works. But then, oh, oh god damn it! At this place, all the seeds were eaten by birds, or and uh, then you see like the the. Um, um, yeah, it's not as uh, simple as that. Uh, that Harvesting weeds for tea sounds, uh, herbal tea sounds very easy. Okay. Yeah. So and then we so we started completely mixed, but we thought like uh, in the end we want to help transit to 
uh, help farmers transition step by step towards agroforestry. Mm -hmm. We thought that that's a nice end. North Star. Yeah. North Star. Um, but let's start with the first strip. So we, then we start, let's start with a mixed uh, strip of, of wildflowers, see what works. Uh, and then, so we, 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 we sowed at some places and then three months later we came back, it was buzzing with insects and... and, 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 and That's the nice thing with, <laughs> with, with these kind of pioneering, uh, formerly known as weeds. They, yeah. Yeah, if they find plants, the right yeah. the native plants, they explode. Like, yeah, they're like... Explode uh, with life. Extreme magnets for, for life. And, and what the cool thing was is that the farmers that, that, that work, that's like, wow, we, I, I always uh, get a smile on my face if I, if I drive by this because I see the dragonflies, butterflies, bees there. And we just like, wow, oh, we, 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 we weren't expecting that you would be so happy with this. But that's already... And it wasn't, you didn't uh, even uh, pay yet. You yeah, we didn't even, even, that's already a, 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 um, a, a, yeah. a, a win. Um, um, so yeah, so the, the, it was important, let, let's start, let's do something. Um, and then in the first year we found out that if you mix, we thought, oh, nice intercropping. <laughs> uh, but it was way too complex because we had too much things. Uh, How do you then later separate them? Yeah, so, and then we, okay, we, we, we separate, we did it by hand and we, 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 we experimented with all kinds of things. And, and some plants, yes, they, they, they can grow together, but most of the things, but, and then we, we thought, uh, yes, this is a first, uh, the mixed strip is, is a first step. Uh, and then um, we said like, okay, let's, we'll, we'll go into strip cropping because then you can uh, have one strip of chamomile, one strip of uh, uh, black currant, one strip of hazelnut, whatever. And, um, and that was, so that's the second step for a farmer. So it, do you like this way of working? Yes, okay, we'll do a second. Uh, and then it becomes a bit more productive and then we can even pay you more for the, uh, for the yield or per kilo, just... Uh, and, and is that now still the case that you strive to pay the farmers per square meter more than what they're earning now on, on yes. whatever they regularly do? Yeah. And you, yeah. you may, yeah, and you, you're able to do that. Yeah, yeah. So the, it's an, it's really important that we pay the farmers right or, or a good price because otherwise they say like, if we say yeah, the, we we need the chamomile or the it, we, it needs to be cheaper, then they say yeah, get it from India, <laughs> uh, or they say like, yeah, it can be cheaper, but then I need to uh, uh, get a bigger field and go into monoculture again. Mm -hmm. uh, so so we need to get the price we pay for the farmers it needs to be yeah relatively high. Um, because otherwise they say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to onions or, or, or dairy or whatever. And, and does it, like for some of the farmers you work with now, five years in, does it make a difference, like meaningful financially? Is it uh, starting to become an, um, interesting yeah, so, for so them? It, building your whole business on herbs is, uh, and on native plants is not a, is not a good idea, yeah. I would say. But, um, and as also the, the place we are uh, currently walking, it's like a regenerative permaculture. They, they started from scratch. Uh, but the good thing with the herbs is that you, you can harvest from the first year. So the, so the business model on agroforestry, so from year one, you'll have revenue. Which is it, not to be underestimated. Yes, no. and, and of course, it's not something you can build your whole business up, on. But, um, and I think for the place where now they like 10% of their revenue they see in the future can come from herbs. So, okay, great. Yeah. Um, Resilient in drought, etc. They, they yeah, mostly do really like well. Grows like wheat. It grows <laughs> so, like, yeah, yeah, but that's, that's not to be, um, it, it doesn't compete necessarily. I mean, in space a bit, but not, not a lot. So, and what we see is that, that uh, so we also work with a farmer, he, he used to grow only hops. And mm -hmm. so in between these rows of hops, it was like, a, uh, uh, bare soil, uh, weeding everything, and now in between these rows, he, he, he's gone wild with all kind of, of of plants for us, and he's like, wow! In in summer, it's 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 full of insects, and 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 I. And so your goal of getting farmers to take that first tiny step, yes, profitable step, or at least cash flow positive, yeah, and then hopefully getting their minds to see diversity as a as, as a potential, not just as a cost, no, the, not the competition, oh, I get more insects and I'm scared, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That seems to be working. Yes, yes, because we, we asked this farmer, like, would you ever go back? Huh? Yeah, and he yeah, said, yeah. never. 
so even if even if we would stop uh, not paying that much for for the weeds, he would say I would always leave these weeds there because uh, I don't have to spread it's all the benefits of of of, uh, of more biodiversity he, he, he sees. And also the thing that's also nice with working with yeah you can explain people how it should be done but showing or mm -hmm. yeah go to your neighbor he's working with us Let's see what you biggest, think about it like we see that i think alfonso i don't remember his name, of, of la junquera yeah. we've interviewed yannick they saw the no fence system so virtual fencing for their cattle at the neighbor and the neighbor was super happy, and and then that triggered. And, yeah. and you can do all the research online you want, but as you see, your neighbor is happy, paying the bills. You pay on time, and and harvest, and don't make a mess. Then and you do that every year. Then yeah, of then, course it's bad. Like, do you get a lot of neighbors of your yes, farmers yes, starting yes, to yes, reach out? Yes, like yeah. we would love to. We would love to. Yeah. So at the moment we have a waiting list of farmers that want to work with us. So there's there's way more farmers that would love to take that first or second mm -hmm. or third step into becoming more diverse uh, and that's yeah so the bigger we grow the more the more we can do with farmers um, which sort of satisfies your starting question like what if we do we all do this or what if the yes. whole world ends up doing this like we we i think could argue it might be a plateau at some point but we could all use more biodiversity everywhere and more diversity and then yeah how do you sell it like what's the, the market side because now if you're waiting list that means yeah if you would sell more you could work with more farmers yes but at the beginning what was the first product that came out of that first trial and how do you even go about um, getting getting some revenue because you have to pay the farmers of course you can do it for a bit of trial but at some yeah. point yeah. it needs so to we, start we, to turn the, the first thing we actually did was create a website to test the to test the market like because we like how do we sell biodiversity how do you sell it to you a mean consumer? The first, the first thing you did even before going yeah. to chamomile and before yeah. was setting up a website yes because that, that, and we thought like, okay, we need to be uh, vertically integrated, the short, shortest chain as possible. So direct to consumer is a logical step. So, okay, let's start a website. And then we thought like, yeah, T is, is nice to start with as e because it can't go through the mailbox. It's and it's not, easy. it's not fresh. It doesn't need yeah, to, yeah. if it's two days late. So that was really also a thing we, we said, like, we, we don't want to go in fresh things because I think like, a, 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 like a fresh vegetables or, or fruits sell them as a farmer, sell them as close as direct to, to any consumer you can find. Uh, and we thought if we can uh, add value by uh, doing a processing step, like drying or whatever, then that can, could be our uh, uh, added value and creating this brand in the market. So we started with uh, yeah, a website of selling online uh, tea <laughs> or her local herbal tea. But, uh, and the, the cool thing online, yeah, you can easily test your proposition. So do we, do we need to talk about bees or do we need to talk about biodiversity or regenerative or what is the thing that, that local, all, that all stick? Yeah, farm. local or... Uh, but that's, I think, a crucial point that many people miss. Like, we have to sell this stuff <laughs> and a lot of it, meaning you have to test how to sell it. But I think in, in the online yeah. and in the sales world and the marketing world, it's very normal to A, B, C, D, yeah. F test and to just see and, and not imagine that everybody likes bees or imagine that like be very ruthless about what you think, but like yeah. that, that's, that's not important or relevant. It's important what the consumer yes. thinks yeah. and how he or she acts. Yeah. And, and so you started A-B testing basically from... Yeah, so we thought like make it work and uh, yeah, whatever proposition we... we who cares? Yeah, who cares? Yeah, we if it's uh, aliens, it's yeah, aliens. Yeah, if it's aliens, yeah. As, as, as soon as... Uh, so for us, it's really clear. We want to uh, do things that, 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 that contribute to nature. If, if w what reason you're buying it, <laughs> take it. <laughs> um, yeah. So so now our tagline is wildly tasty uh, uh, biodiversity or wildly so you, tasty nature restoration. Actually, so um, that you figured out that nature restoration is stronger than biodiversity. Yeah, biodiversity is is uh, what? It's eh? for the geeks. Yeah, yeah it's for yeah. the geeks. And uh, and in the beginning we were a bit more on the bees uh, because yeah, so birds, bees, and butterflies. These are that, that there are concepts like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what we, what I also th like everybody likes nature. If you like, if you look see it at the the funds for WWF, the, the, a lot of people donate. That so, from from uh, yeah, every uh, in the end everybody some way relate but regenerative super technical biodiversity yeah. what uh, but nature 
oh wow yeah i love nature or i love birds and yeah i love birds. restoration sounds good yeah, yeah it sounds good and wildly tasty oh yeah oh tell me more about it um so what we learned is that nobody cares about you being regenerative or it, that's not so there's yes of course there's this dark green area of the market that 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 would that will uh, keep on buying things even if they're not tasty but uh, because they're they're good. it's not it's not big and, and it's so not big yeah so uh, so that it was really important to start with the market because we we thought if we can prove to farmers that there is a market for local weeds then they'll come so that was the most important and and we we started also so in the first year we had almost no harvest for ourselves but we 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 bought the the herbs we started with uh, uh, as local as possible so as and as biodynamic or biological as possible so some from from netherlands some from germany so because we needed we we needed to have a product so we mm -hmm. and, but already we we we, we uh, designed the product with the ingredients that would eventually so you start, could come. yeah because otherwise you would because we needed to, to test if, yeah. if, if you people to like test, it, and, but if, you didn't if, have anything if, that grew yet. Yes, and so you needed to kick. Yeah. Uh, so we, we 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 piloted uh, actually. And, and what was the biggest surprise there? Um, the biggest surprise was what that sold absolutely nothing that you imagined was amazing, or the other way around, or what was. Way yeah, more the biggest surprise was we we launched with a uh, um, uh, like a viral uh, campaign or like. Uh, a referral campaign. Okay, viral. That would be a great. Yeah, but, you yeah. planned, but it went yeah, viral. So, the, so we started with the website, and Dan and I did a growth hacking course okay. while working on the website. That was like really, good. and there we learned yeah, let build in virality. Mm -hmm. And so we we let was a few days before Easter, and then we 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 we. So we're talking twenty nineteen. Yeah. Yes. And we thought, okay, we'll, we'll we'll integrate some. Like, if you leave your email address on our website, we'll we'll plant one square meter of, of wildflowers for you. <laughs> and after you've you've subscribed, you will, you'll get a link. And if you share that with your friends, everybody that comes via your link <laughs> will plant an extra square meter for you. So this was this this what is Ponzi scheme of, of biodiversity uh, but and it so, worked and, so, and we posted it on our own LinkedIn pages and we said like okay let's uh, go into Easter and then the Tuesday after Easter we, we opened our inbox and we were like oh we were tagged by on LinkedIn by the happy activist mm -hmm. he's a guy in the Netherlands every day he posts in a, a, a short mm -hmm. video and so we whoa whoa this guy tagged and, and he made a video about our and, and yeah, that went he makes went, a video every day as well yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. makes a video every day and, and and he had a like a one minute short video of of, of, of our concept and then it, it exploded yeah, to be clear, there was there was only a concept at the time <laughs> yes it was and well and we had we had already some some so we had some bags of tea and we we, we created some blends uh, and then in the, like the one month after we were busy uh, shipping all the the, the, the things that we, so that really kick-started our mm -hmm. uh, um, and what, and what triggered and what, people? What the like trigger, what, yeah, was why that, did people? Because you see so many things getting launched, or concepts, or ideas, or crowdfunding, or whatever, yeah. pre-sales yeah, every yeah. other day. And and what what do you think? I mean, it's I easy think, yeah, to look like back. biodiversity is such an abstract concept, and a lot of people think like, oh, how can I contribute, or mm -hmm. what what can I do? And and because it's tea, so everybody understands tea. Yeah. Oh yeah, I drink tea. Mm -hmm. Most of the people. And then it's like, oh, if you drink this tea. You can contribute, so it's really a simple. Square meter. Yeah, yeah, but also, but by drink, you can contribute to this really abstract uh, problem. I think that that yeah, so selling some sort of mm. positive perspective. I think that 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 is what really uh, uh, appealed to, to people. So then you had to plant a lot of square meters. Yes. Yeah, so then we had to plant a lot of square meters, and and um, and from there on, um, but because we were selling. That mm -hmm. really helped to all skeptical farmers. They said, "Yes, we have, we have demand. Come on, grow it for." It. And and from there on, we 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 uh, uh, expanded to more farmers. And and still, some uh, they they come bring their harvest of uh, plantain and like 500 kilos of plantain. They say like. Guys, can, can you sell this? I said, yeah, come on, we need more. <laughs> I said, okay, yeah. Yeah, because uh -huh. how many products, like what, and then we get to where we are now actually, but like in terms of products, 
range. Yeah. What what do you currently sell? Because many of our listeners are not in the Netherlands or in Western Europe, so they're not going to be able to to buy or to see you in supermarkets, etc. So what do you currently sell and, yeah, and where? What, just to give a bit of a. Yeah. We're so, talking. So for I'm going like to say spring product. 2024, but it's almost summer and not really the weather, but still. We're yeah, in so the, currently we have like eight different flavors of herbal tea. We so have small two, patches. Yeah, small tea bags. Uh, we, uh, yeah. Standard. We went yeah. all the way uh, in um, uh, that. Um, uh, so eight flavors, two kombucha, because from tea you can make fermented tea kombucha uh, we have iced tea we have uh, exactly the right way for the last few years on, on kombucha yes, and iced yeah, teas yeah. etc Perfectly and we have fine. sparkling tea which is like the the uh, a proxy for wine uh, mm -hmm. so it, it's a ah, it's a way I more tasted. complex uh, 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 i tasted tea. a bottle of that it's really good yeah it has a complexity that's like yeah, you drink it as wine basically. Yeah, it's so not wine, see, but it's yeah, a, it's, it's, it's no non-alcohol. But you drink it on the moment you would otherwise drink. Uh, very uh, interesting. I mean, the bottle is very interesting, and I th I'm imagining the margins yes. as well because yeah. and we're sort of used. It's very interesting because we're. I was looking at it with the pricing of a wine bottle without any doubt. I think many people do. 15 20 euros or at least yeah. up from yeah. eight nine easily for quality but there's no there's no upper limit let's say and then you buy a, a juice like a, a from a, like yeah. a buzzing tea and and you pay a similar amount and that the, the cost i'm imagining involved in that compared to a wine are, are way lower yeah depends but, yeah, on you. but it's an interesting that yeah. somebody paid for if, if you said if you told somebody 10 years ago you paid for a juice non-alcoholic yes. that amount you yeah, say you're yeah, nuts like right, if you pitch yeah. that to somebody you're like yeah, no yeah. and now it's until it's, it's done, it's and, done and, and, and it fits like because it's, yeah. there's this whole non-alcoholic yes the uh, market special for non-alcoholic is, is booming and so of course uh, you have the wine where they take out the alcohol and never know how they do yeah. it and you have the low alcohol and but and then we say like okay and this non-alcoholic wine is uh, is local and and uh, nature recovery and super nice so why not choose our uh uh, um, mm -hmm. And so we, that's also with tea and there are margin products. So therefore, we need to look into products that we need to pay the farmers, right? Oh, yeah. So so our, our um, uh, ingredients are really expensive if you would compare it to, yeah, to uh, per kilo, uh, it's per kilo crazy. To, to other. But by uh, selling them, oh, yeah, so uh, doing having the chain as short as possible. We can still sell it for yes, it's it's a bit higher priced. Sorry, than, so than sorry I interrupted other. your catalog. So you have the wine replace, yes, or yeah, the so wine like yeah. the wine moment replacement. Yeah, so yeah the sparkling, a, yeah, tea, sparkling um, tea. Um, and we have uh, cordial. Uh, what is cordial? Uh, yeah, uh, syrup. syrup. Ah, okay, um, okay, yeah. And we have Interesting pasta business as even. Well. Uh, pasta. How do you get granola. into pasta? And granola. Yeah, so we went into pasta because and we have a, we have a herbal pasta, and so we have a pasta <laughs> from which the is from the Netherlands. That's gonna raise some questions. From the there. Netherlands, yeah. So the grains are from uh, regenerative farmers, and it's uh, instead of monograno, it's multigrano. So it's, uh, it contains a lot of different ancient grains, and and in these fields there are a lot of weeds grows in between. The so population the population weeds. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, so the ecological value of these 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 fields is, is super high, and you can make pasta from it. Uh, and then we even add uh, plantain and sage to the pasta and then wow. that's our wild sage pasta. And so if you just like there you went into like a big field, not just a strip. Yeah. Where previously it's monoculture, maybe organic or non-organic, maybe some cover crop grain, maybe inter crop, but going to then a multi-crop, turning that into a product with some wild herbs in it, that's, that's suddenly you talk about acres and yes. hectares. Yeah, but uh, what, so, uh, uh, so our goal was to create market for for like local regenerative uh, uh, or as native as possible uh, products. Uh, so for the so like five years later, more and more people in the Netherlands are turning into regenerative, mm -hmm. and we can then say, oh, you you have this field of grain, we'll buy some from you. So so then it's not us asking the farmer to yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to go, but. Uh, so also for buckwheat, we talked to a lot of they like, yeah, I'm growing buckwheat. It's, it's great for the bees, but I cannot find any market. Then I think, okay, we'll create a tea blend with buckwheat. We'll create, now we're working on miso and soy sauce, not with soy in it, but with buckwheat in it. Mm -hmm. Because you can uh, make from uh, protein, you can make umami. Yeah, uh, fermented. Um, so, um, but I can imagine pasta is quite a different, it's a, 
but it's still dried, of course. Yeah. But it's quite a different ingredient. Like it's a different moment where you use it. Yes, you don't exactly. drink it's, it. It's, you don't it's have to, more have to difficult put. because the pasta we're selling is, and that's also with the granola. It's it it uh, if you want to do everything right, it's like a million dollar pasta. Yeah. Uh, and that's the all the time the thing with. Uh, uh, and especially pasta is a bit of a commodity product, mm -hmm. uh, so therefore it's it's it's, it's harder to uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah to make that work. But that's also so from our portfolio or products we want to also show like all these products yeah. can work can be done uh, can be done. Uh, so what we do is like we we think okay, let's create let's create a product with the highest ecological value possible. And then, okay, yeah, uh, local umami, yeah, not with soy. Yeah, of course you can grow soy in the Netherlands, but the ecological value of soy is, is almost none. And let's look for something with, ha with like hazelnut and buckwheat. Can you yeah, fermentate that? Can yes. ferment then into umami as well. So, and currently our, our ambition is to create a new product or launch a new product every month. <laughs> <laughs> just to test again, like yeah, that's just kind to of like to 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 and uh, kill them as well if they don't work. Like what's yes, the yes, like, yeah, because that, you cannot keep a nice portfolio thing. of so so uh, so the, our distribution. So we we do a lot of uh, or we have like uh, three or four channels. So direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. Twenty five percent of our revenue wow. is coming from direct to consumer, wow. and it's actually quite evenly. Uh, uh, so uh, and twenty five percent or. Uh, 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 restaurants, bars, 25% mm -hmm. small retail, like farm shops and mm -hmm. uh, and specialized uh, retail. And then uh, the last 25 is like end of the year gifting. Um, ah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, yeah, it's all... all That's all a pretty even, yeah. yeah. Evenly. Uh, and the, the nice thing with direct to consumers is that we can easily test new products. So we'll launch... You have all the email addresses. Yes, you have all the make a yeah. small batch see if it works get feedback also like people le let us know do you like it mm -hmm. or what 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 should be done better uh, and then if it works we can uh, uh, take it to uh, uh, restaurants and uh, and that's the cool thing the, on the quality perspective is that from uh, in the restaurants you see like from Michelin star restaurants working with our products mm -hmm. uh, until uh, uh, the other side of the spectrum uh, fam Ooh, nice Wow we see a beautiful deer walking away. Then we're going to talk about the place we're at. Yeah, a deer popping out. Of popping the out of the cover crop, basically, and out of the tree lane, going into the into the woods. So just everybody imagine what we just saw yeah. as we turn a video. And, and a lot but of imagine bees a, and a lot insects, of yeah, yeah. We walked through a very nice cover crop mix, I have to say, and you can hear, I think, the the zooming of the insects around us. Matthijs is lowering the microphone now too. The, and the bird. So, you, yeah, yeah, the, so, so yeah, direct to consumer is really a test. I mean, it's a, it's a significant part of your revenue, but yes. also the easiest way. The easiest way to test. Yeah, and as we started, testing on direct to consumer is, is, is great. Uh, and, uh, One and that, per that's month. What, that's, yeah, uh, that's uh, ambitious, but. And that's also for our. So, what we. So we don't want to become like this tradition, like traditional companies would say like, okay, hocus pocus focus, uh, uh, go into iced tea or going to tea. But we think, nah, no, we don't want to create like this, like three flavors and then that again create a new monoculture. So we need to diversify everything we do. So it's our ambition that in five years from now, we'll have like this whole, like a hundred different products that all do like a 100,000 in revenue. And, and how do you, just like your farmers, manage that complexity in yes. a company? Because it's, there's a reason why we do Hocus Pocus Focus, yes. because yeah. it so makes from your, an, your From an economical your perspective... It makes your but also easier. It makes your spreadsheets easier because you, have yes. to, you know what to turn, which dials to play with. Yeah. And, and you're like, we do one a month. Like as, as a marketing department, you don't even know where to start if you do one a month. You drive them nuts, probably. Yeah, but yeah. But that's great marketing yeah, every, yeah. It, it to launch a new product every month. Um, and of course, we'll, we'll need to see how long. So, but yeah, so how we work with our farms is like every year in the beginning of the year, we'll make a forecast on all ingredients. So, okay, last year we grew uh, 50%. So this year we need uh, 500 kilos of uh, dried chamomile. Or, and, uh, so we have like uh, uh, more than 30 different crops that we, we, we... Three zero people, not one three. Yeah, three zero, wow. 
Uh, yeah, so... Uh, and how much of that do you grow yourself? Or do you grow with your growers? Uh, 80% or wow. 75%. And, and, but and how, many more, grow- how many growers? Uh, 30 and as more, you would think one on one, but that's of course not the case. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, and then we said like, okay, we need 500 kg of uh, of uh, camel mile. and then yeah, it's easy to to say to one farmer do it all. But then we said like, yeah, no, five farmers. That all. And how do does that work? You put like out a, a question, but you know who's grown it before or yes. where no, you so grew we, it before. So we have long term relationship. We we try to to build long term relationships, and then we said like, okay. Uh, especially for the perennials, of course, you, you're like, okay, you already have this on your land. Uh, how's it going? Uh, 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 yeah, what? Uh, and then, so we need to cap. So it, a lot of farms say, well, I want to do more of this. And no, 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 <laughs> diversify. Um, have you tried X, Y, Z? Yeah. Yes. So. Um, have you met Ted? Yeah. Have you tried? Yeah. Okay. And then, that's so every year, step by step, they can do more of or or or, or of different crops. So we will have a forecast, and then we say, okay. Um, uh, let's uh, say uh, you guys can do uh, 100 kg, and then we'll, we'll pay you this, uh, and it's guaranteed. So if if if, if it w- if it works, we'll we'll guarantee you the. Uh, so upfront, you guarantee a price per kilo. Yes. And yeah. regardless of quality, or is that not a thing? It's like, is it's not it a if, thing. if caramel came up, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, and we say, of course, you need to, we have some requirements, of course, but the, the, those requirements are more, <laughs> we don't want pesticides, no uh, synthetic fertilizer, and, uh, and we want Herbicides, probably. Herbicides, not, yeah. yes, uh, but yeah, we want it uh, as natural as possible. But herbicides on weeds, yeah, it's probably a bad idea. Yes, yeah. yeah and, uh, and it's cost for the farmer, so why would he or she yeah, yeah. do it anyway? Yeah, but you need those. Do you test for that as well? Yes, so we, we, we do tests on the... Um, so we do like a, how do you say, steak proofer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, sample size, yeah, sample yeah. Sample testing sampling. on... on uh, really curious what this machine is, by the way. Yeah, this, gonna... this is a machine they use to, to pick uh, berries. Uh, yeah, for the, the listeners, we're looking at a metal structure, two meters by meter and a half, two meters, on wheels. And we're on a, we're going to talk about the farm here. We're going to explore it in another episode way deeper, by the way, but this is a a berry harvesting device. I mean, for people that are harvesting yeah, so berries too. A low-tech berry harvesting and then, yeah, device. It's, it's, yeah, it's still manual, but then how to get it into baskets and stuff, I think, with... Uh, yeah, so the plant is in, yeah. will be in the middle, and then here you have like uh, crates, and then people, I think, sitting here, uh, shaking the, uh, uh, yeah, the yeah, bushes, yeah. and then the berries fall off into the crates, and then... Uh, yeah, we're talking about pre, pre-recording, we're talking about tech. And, and machinery, etc. cetera. Um, how, how has it been actually in, in process? Uh, sorry, we'll go back to the, the farm, we'll get yeah. to processing. So you, you make a farm plan with yeah. the 30, for the 30 ingredients, the quantities, yeah. pre-discussed uh, price, which yes. is amazing, uh, yeah. just for most most crops and commodities, etc. that is never the case. You're gonna see the year. If it's a good year, everybody has a good year. And, and you're, uh, excuse my French, screwed. And, uh, but in this case, yeah, if it's a good year, if they have more, you buy more? Like, yeah, how, so, is that, so is that variable? We, we, we can, so we say like, uh, uh, like 100 kilos, that's for sure. If you have more, we cannot get, we'll dry it for you. That's what, and so at this place we have, we have seen hugely productive years. That's the, also the nice thing with perennials that, that like you, like we, we, we calculated on the first year, like, oh, this is the, the expect, and then the, the second and third year were way too productive and we had way too much of some herbs. But, but we said like, we'll, we'll dry it. And then after, once it's dried, it's, 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 uh, uh, you can store it for years. So that's the, so it's preserved of co- or conserved. Um, and then we said, like, okay, we, we cannot pay for this now. Now, but we'll we'll let's look together if we can find a market for it. And uh, so the cool thing is that we so we had kilos of of, of, of some herbs, um, and we and it took us two three years, and now we completely sold them out. Uh, and even through, so your, that, that through your products yeah. or through other places that start to reach out to say, can we have 10 Mostly through our okay. products, because what we see, like the price, we we we, uh, we, we put our, it's nobody can work with that. Yeah. Uh, and so that's also, the, we, we tried, like maybe we could do white wholesale, label for wholesale, yeah. but then uh, 
what we figure is like if you if you do not really integrate it in the proposition the branding and everything then people are like okay why is this bag of tea so super expensive yeah uh, uh, but if it's oh this is wilderland tea local regenerative biodiversity recovering oh that sounds nice i'll buy it so mm -hmm. uh, that's also what we learned is that that yeah if you don't do it right on the market side it, it will not uh, work but I can imagine like chefs reaching out or companies reaching out to but you yeah, you don't have a wholesale side of things where No, not yet. No, is we, it, if we it goes see, into your product, like who cares? Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. And uh, so we do collapse and then uh, and then it works better. Mm -hmm. um, um, but uh, and then yeah, we, in the beginning we thought we would easily go into wholesale mm -hmm. or that, that that would be a nice thing. But yeah, again, yeah, if, if ingredients, they, if commodities, yeah, yeah. Uh, because and that's uh, I think the the biggest challenge for everything, like yeah, from uh, like a hazelnut, it, the consumer will not see from the, this hazelnut is coming from uh, uh, regen, uh, agroforestry uh, in the Netherlands and and this is like three euros a kilo and this hazelnut is coming from uh, Italy from a monoculture it's 50 cents per kilo and this hazelnut is coming from uh, Turkey from another monoculture bigger monoculture 25 cents. so which one would you choose and then people like yeah they're they're yeah, yeah <laughs> why yeah. go for the the yeah. hazelnut for three euros so therefore I think the branding aspect is, is really important because then people are like oh wow granola from this cool brand of course I'll buy it with with that hazelnut in yeah. it uh, um, and so then to the processing and actually yeah. where we are, we're at Schevinkhoven, we'll, we'll cover that, you might have listened to that before or after this with Maarten later today. I'm not sure if we're going to do a walk because the weather later might turn different, but so we've done the walk. Um, but okay, you harvest all of this, How, where do you even start? You said we're drying, Yeah. that's the first step sorting like how do you because okay yeah. you went to strip so it's mostly yeah. the same yes that helps yeah, of course helps. yeah and then what do you of course depending on the crop but what's the standard way of how do you at the end get it in a bag in a tea bag yeah so when we started there was no processing for herbs or tea of course, or whatever in the Netherlands yeah. No, and uh, yeah let's uh, so we, we we designed actually a, dr a dryer ourselves which is capable of, of, of like drying a new crop every year every day mm -hmm. um, and we got help from this company in the Netherlands and they dry parsley nine months a year 24 7 <laughs> so a big and so they knew everything about drying on a big industrial mono land scale uh, so how was that first conversation with a company like that like did they <laughs> like it did they think you were they, absolutely nuts yeah they, they liked it and thought it was absolutely nuts <laughs> but they said like that and that's it's what the farm they like but we like it because it's so crazy <laughs> let's okay we'll we'll give it a try um yeah so we and actually we designed a dryer uh and we want farmers to dry it themselves so our model is based so if we need to harvest the herbs you get um uh, x amount of of uh kilos per uh yeah you, you get x per kilo if you harvest it yourself and bring it to us, our dryer, you get X plus uh, 20% uh, per kilo. And if you uh, dry it yourselves and at the end of the season bring the dried herbs to us, um, you'll get X plus uh, 50%. To get to give an incentive to, yeah, we would love you to dry it because then you can add more value. The business model becomes more interesting. Uh, so we designed a dryer and, and now a lot of farmers are building dryers themselves on their land because they're like, yeah, wow, the model is way more interesting if I can harvest small batches, dry them myself, and in the end of the uh, season, bring them to... Uh, yeah, because Waterland. of course you can, you can harvest in like sort of lost hours and lost yes. moments yeah. and you can plan it yourself. This is not a crop or most of it, if I understand, that it really matters the exact second of harvest, no. like one day or the other. No. It, it, it's more flexible, more robust because yes. they're weeds. Yeah. And the drying part needs to be probably fast, relatively yes, soon after. Yes, it needs fast. So the, after you harvest, you need to dry it the same, or it needs to be in the dry the same day because otherwise uh, the bacteria will grow. But and it, once the, it in, is in the dryer, Yeah, and then it needs to be dry in like 48 hours. Yeah. And then and it's but dry, then, then completely good. Uh, and the quality is way better than all the products from... Uh, um, yeah. Where do you want to pass, yeah. Sage. Yeah, uh, sage. Always nice. Also in our tea. 
Um, Very interesting. So you're actively promoting the de decentralization yes. of yeah. um, of drying in this and case. And when we also say like, okay, this 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 farmer in your region has a dryer, better you dry it at their place. Yeah. Uh, so to create these like small processing hubs for for dried uh, and for some dry. connection between farmers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 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 so we invested in a tea bag machine and a processing line. So because yeah, once you have a dried plant that it's not yet tea, <laughs> it needs to be uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, made into um, uh, yeah, smaller pieces and sieving and whatever and make a pure nice product out of it. So that's that's the thing we do. So we, we've invested in that processing line, uh, but I think, yeah, start drying more on the la on, on your own farm. Um, is an amazing So yeah, that's, that's the thing we want to uh, promote. And then for the like liquids you sell, how does that work? Yeah, so the so the tea we do all sell and of ourselves, but the liquids like iced tea, and we're also planning to make more sodas. We partner with uh, a bottling company, mm -hmm. and, and you, you come this, up with the recipe. Yeah, we come up with the recipe, and then we say like, okay, what's your uh, MOQ? We'll start with a small batch of, of canned iced tea, and then if it works, we'll we'll we'll, we'll scale up and uh, uh, do more. Uh, and was it tricky? Was it difficult to find? Because often you hear in other products, maybe not necessarily here, in, but that the minimum for some of these uh, more processing, turning it into yeah. a final product companies is is the minimum is so big yeah. that it's not accessible for for startups or small companies. Or how, have you find yeah, that as so, well in the soda industry? Uh, yeah, um, I th a few years ago we thought, okay, we need to be vertically integrated on everything we need our own bottling line and we need to do everything ourselves but actually at the moment in the netherlands we there are mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. like like mostly crafty or or mid uh, like in between big or small companies that can do white label uh, white label bottling and all these and yes it's challenging so we work together with a lot of different companies and for every product we work together with a taste maker someone to like okay make this nice and and for every product we'll we'll look for a producer or a partnering uh, but and it's possible so we have like this this whole ecosystem of mm -hmm. of people helping us to make the product taste better and also that do the processing with us or for us uh, that's, and that's a surprise probably to you. That that's yes. Yeah. Ecosystem in five years, which is nothing if you look at agriculture timescales, there is an ecosystem yeah. around you yeah. that, yeah, that you're part of. That. Yeah, and I think that you see, yeah, so for like a canning, uh, mm -hmm. getting a liquid into a can, there were, yeah, it was a big uh, step to, to go. But now there's like from uh, with 10,000 cans, you can, or like 4,000 liters. Or you can or even there are we now know a company that uh, that is like MOQ is two thousand liters. That's like yeah, you that's, can test, yeah, test, you can test, test, that's, test. That's that's of course yes, it's 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 serious and 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 you, it, it's a big problem if if it uh, if it fails and if you if nobody likes it. But it's not so. It's not. Yeah. Uh, uh. Uh, and then from there on, you can easily scale to 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 yeah. Uh, uh, hundreds of thousands hundreds of, if you want. But yeah, the thing is with, so I, there is some processing, but also yeah, for pasta, that's a good example as well. The, so the pasta is still really expensive because the processing is, is super inefficient. But we said, yeah, we'll start and whatever it costs. So, and the guy, we, we, he, he bought a pasta machine and he was, was working day and night to, 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 to get it. Pro but now, was because he, the he volumes in, increase, yeah. he, he, he bought a new pasta machine, which is way more efficient. So, yeah, you can create it as well, I as think. As long as you can sell it. As long as you can. So if, if there's market, uh, processing will follow. And that's the thing we, so therefore, Focusing on the market is, in my opinion, the, the most important thing because, um, and then the rest will follow. And do you feel like you're saturating certain markets? I mean, the Netherlands is small, but still 17 million people, one seven. There's a lot of tea, a lot of, like yeah. say drinks and pasta being eaten. And yeah. like there's, do you feel, are you starting to hit it? some limits there at some point? Oh, no, 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 is, we, 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 we're super small compared to a market. And I think there, it can be super big, yeah. And then, because yeah, if you look at uh, tea or iced tea or or sodas or kombucha, these markets are huge, 
And there's almost, so there's a lot of competition from uh, Monoland anonymous brands, maybe selling some organic. But if you say like, yo, we have this cool drink, local, nature recovering and come have a look. This is the farm where your, your soft drink is growing. Then we're like, whoa, why, why not try that brand? Uh, and so now what we see is that based on the quality, people are coming back because they like the, the products we sell. And I think that's the... The, 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 the taste the, has to be good. The de yeah. taste has to be good. And then I think, yeah, we can grow uh, uh, way bigger uh, because... Uh, so what's, what's limiting that growth currently, your growth? I think price. So our pro products are, are more expensive than, uh, and so you, and so therefore people need to know the brand or, or and that's the, the and we, 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 we don't want to go to big retail or uh, um, because then, yeah, the, 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 we need to otherwise or lower our price for the farmers or uh, increase the price for. Uh, yeah, because where do you see, do you see potential of lowering the, the end price of the consumer? Yeah, yeah, I see. The, so recently, we, the yeah. So recently, we lowered the price of our iced tea because we we, yeah. uh, we now can produce larger volumes. Uh, and so for the, uh, things like iced tea or all these canned things, most of the money goes into the processing, mm -hmm. and their uh, economies of scale will 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 really uh, be a significant price uh, reducer. Um, so you know, we will never uh, yeah, yeah. lower the price for the farmers and we'll try to be as efficient in the processing as possible, either by going vertically integrated and do it ourselves and, and finding mm -hmm. smart ways of, of doing it, or otherwise go to, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, go bigger uh, in the processing of the yeah, cans or whatever. Yeah. And what what's next in that sense of local 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 next door there's a big country called germany mm -hmm. the other side there's the uk belgium like yeah. how do you think about expansion or replication or impact in that in that sense yeah so so our, so we're called wilderland in a, it, it's an international name uh, we did that on purpose because we we want to export the model we don't want to export dutch uh, nature recovering uh, uh, tea which probably in terms of like the, the land prices here and the pressure, I mean, it's a world champion of uh, biodiversity loss, but yeah. um, it might be easier. I'm not saying maybe yes or no, but it, it might be equally challenging or easier in other places where land prices are less or there might be pressure. But anyway, you don't want to, you're not going to grow tea here and export it. No, that, that's, that, so we think like, uh, we believe like everybody in the world should eat their local ecosystem. So if, if you, if, people if, if you get more native plants into your diet farmers will need to grow that into crops and then by having more native plants on farmlands way more uh, bees butterflies and, and uh, birds will come back so and deer as we just and saw. deer and and and, and everything will will that as a insect as a cornerstone species the, the rest will follow um, so therefore we believe like so we, we want to export so yes we could export uh, wilderland to copenhagen or denmark and and that's actually we would love like in 20 years from now that that you're on a city trip well let's say in in, in uh, cape town and that oh wow there's wilderland on the menu here let's try this 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 south african kombucha which has completely different uh, ingredients than the one in uh, tokyo <laughs> or in amsterdam um, so we, we want to export the branding, uh, but we want to keep the production and, uh, and, and processing as local as possible. And has that already like, happened? Are conversations happening there or what's yeah, so, focus, so we focus, have, focus uh, on? We have, on uh, yeah, so the main focus is on, on getting the model right in the Netherlands. So every year we learn and every, yeah. uh, every year we, we, we tweak and we... we so for some ingredients, we need to put the price higher because then we think, like, yeah, farmers are not really enthusiastic about these flowers or what. Okay, then oh, higher price. Oh yes, I'll do it then. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Then we'll 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 pay. You it learn this. so much on that. Sense, yes, of we course, learn yeah. a lot, and also on on how to sell and how to brand and all the possibilities. We started with tea, and now I see endless possibilities of these culinary biodiversity products. Um, and so we worked uh, with uh, two Belgian. We worked together with two Belgian farmers, and they contacted us. They said, 
we want to do this in Belgium. Can we can we work? And they said, okay, let's start small. Let, maybe you can start. And now they have their own brand copying us in Belgium. Uh, do it, starting the same with the, with the herbal tea. So they produce for us and they produce for their own brand now. And also like, yeah, um, even emails from Germany, also from UK, people saying like, okay, uh, I want to copy your Shout thing. And we said, Emily. yes, yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe one day we'll, we'll create this uh, uh, big book of uh, biodiversity uh, business modeling and say like, okay, uh, do it. Um, so and yes, we would love to. Because to for sure, do. they will be learning a lot. Yes. As well, that you didn't tackle yet, or there are other like there will be a fair like how do you make biodiversity tasty and, and yes. sales driven for the farmers is going to have different shapes and forms, but an endless amount of learnings because nobody's doing that. Like it has never yeah. been the focus. It's been a byproduct. Oh, we have more biodiversity on a biodynamic farm. Amazing, but. That's not the thing that people have been selling. Yeah. And and you're saying it's definitely, I mean, people are willing to pay significantly more for a really good, high quality, super yes. tasty, yeah. et cetera, with a really good story, if you're able yes. to sell the story. And that might look very different in Southern Germany or in yeah. Italy or in Spain or in Belgium. Yeah. And for you, it must be exciting to see. And what we feel see. is that if you sell it as nature recovery, it's way more attractive than as selling it regenerative. Do you think that's uh, that's universal in a sense. Yeah, could, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, the, for the Netherlands it works. Maybe because yeah. the Netherlands is so low in biodiversity that it is is something which is way more appealing. But I think it's way more like the, all the name Wilderland or bees. This way more mm -hmm. emotional than uh, regen agro yeah, ecology yeah, yeah. No, or they're, these they're technical more technical terms. Literally wild farmed and their tagline yes, uh, yes. full of life. Yes, these these things are, are way. I think that's the make it appealing. And then of course in every context, mm -hmm. maybe in a, so we do not do not focus about the health aspects of all these herbs because that that could easily be a thing. Uh, but maybe in some countries that works mm -hmm. way better. Uh, so of course if, for every local situation. Uh, uh, it's different. Um, so where are we here? We're at Schevinkhoven, close to Utrecht in the Netherlands, in the center, more or less. Yes. And a very different farm than other places. Uh, agroforestry focus. We're going to explore it with Marta. But how did your relationship here start? And what do you grow? Yes. What do they grow for you? Or what do you grow with them? Yeah. So we start. So this is Schevinkhoven. This is a good example of a farm that 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 started. Uh, all the way regenerative permaculture from the start. They said like, okay, we'll, we'll, we want to prove that, that it can be done. And we were one of their first uh, partners and we started really small. So, in, uh, and every year they are expanding their, their land and, and expanding the, the, the herbs they grow for us. Uh, so we started really small, uh, but yeah, from the first year they had revenue via us. Uh, um, Which in agroforestry systems, is not normal, let's say. Let's, uh, you can yeah. plant layers underneath or next to it or in the rows that bring cash from day one or from month five, let's say. Or it's it's very it looks very different in your business yes. model. Yes. Yeah. Even yeah. though it's not a lot of okay, but just that fact that you can show yeah, th and that you beneficial know. and yes. beneficial for the soil and beneficial for it's a uh, not yeah. to be underestimated. And so yeah, from the start they, they, they started integrating herbs in their in their system because we said look this is this is our demand. Can you can you do something for us? How many years ago was that? I think it was four so years. So they were one of the first. Yeah, like one of the year. first, yes. And uh, also that's part of our model. So we want to be a partner for market for the for the big mono land farmers that say like okay I want to take a first step but also for these pioneers that that uh, that say like okay I want to prove it can be done. Uh, yeah, both depend on the market. So we said, okay, um, um, and we started with, I think, fennel, uh, lemon balm, sage. So we had a list, and they said, okay, we'll we'll integrate these. Um, and this year, yeah, so every year they're they're doing more. Um, yeah. So what we see here is is like, a, yeah, it's agroforestry all strips with trees trees, herbs, different layers. And some of these, these, these lanes are, are uh, filled with, with herbs for us. It's, uh, it's um, simple you, as that. And so can you harvest multiple times? Can you? Yeah, like, so that's also it? the nice thing with, with uh, a lot of weeds. If, um, 
yeah, even four or five times a year. <laughs> so the, yeah, that's the thing, like uh, plantain or chamomile, you can keep harvesting. <laughs> so because they, they grow back uh, yeah, yeah, it benefits really fast. from the harvesting. Yes. As it will. Um, and you can, most of the times you can harvest the whole plant. Uh, and of course, you, also we have flowers, which are, so, uh, there's also a lot of handwork. So like um, uh, elder flower blossom and uh, linden blossom, all these things. These are, there's only two weeks a year that you mm. can harvest them and uh, mostly done by hand. That's more challenging, but all these like green herbs growing like weeds, that's... that's uh, and you do that with, like, how do you harvest those flowers in those two weeks then? With all the farmers probably that have them at the same time, more or less. Yeah, so some farmers say like, okay, I'll do it myself, we'll, we'll arrange that. Uh, and even also for the, the so the, the hand-picked flowers are way more difficult. And we also invite our customers. Mm -hmm. Come have a look at these places. That's also, it's really interesting for people like, wow, what a nice, what a beautiful place. And then uh, like in an afternoon, help us uh, doing the harvest. But also, that's also the nice thing with working with farmers because we also we have uh, pine needles and uh, birch leaf um, in our products. And I was always like, ah, how can we make this work? How? But now we have two farmers that say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll plant those, uh, those trees. Uh, um, somewhere and I'll uh, um, mow all the time the, the, the new um, sprouts coming out. So they found a way of like harvesting from trees mechanically in a way that it's, that it's, that it's economically. So that's economical to do. And it was like, wow, these, I love these, like, like that farmers being innovative and thinking, okay, I can, <laughs> I can harvest birch leaves for you in this way. And it's like, yeah, okay. If, so if, how did they do it? Sorry, did they planted the trees? Yeah, so they planted the trees and it's uh, actually he's creating a, like a bonsai forest. Ah, I keep it super low. Keep and it, it can super low. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, once in a while. Like tea, actually. Yeah, yeah. like tea and uh, uh, like, yeah, the, the, like 30 or 50 centimeters from wow. the ground. Skip. But but the ecological value is great because the birch attracts a lot of insects and and it's 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 bush and stimulates and, and the growth of the plant continuously. Yes. Yeah. So uh, so that's also the 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 nice because we say yeah we have this demand for for this uh, seed or this 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 leaf. Uh, how can we make it work in a way that 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 we will not create a million dollar product but still can can pay you. Uh, a fair price and then sometimes these like <laughs> inventive ways of, of, of going into uh, 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 agroforestry uh, pop up and you must meet I don't know how you finance it until now but like investors regularly I mean the impact investing yes. world in the Netherlands is, is quite alive and I like to ask this question of what, what do you tell them or what, what is the one thing, let's say we do this in a theater in somewhere, the financial heart of Amsterdam, let's yeah. say. And, and we have a room full of investors now. They're all, of course, excited after this evening uh, biodiversity uh, is sexy and is tasty and needs to be sold, etc. cetera. Um, but if there's one thing you want them to remember and, and do differently or uh, put to work the next day uh, when they're back in their office deciding on uh, money flows left or right, what would that be? What would that seed that you would like to plant? Um, be for people that are um, in control of, of money, their own wealth or other people's money? Yeah. Uh, great question. I, yeah, so um, um, I think, yeah, like how we look into the, the crops is like, look at the ecological value. Because I think the higher the ecological value, the easier the proposition is because then you can sell it okay. as a, and then it, because, so we see that works really well, but, but it, it's, it's a bit different, hey, yeah. weeds, but um, I think, so that's one thing, there's great market opportunity for this uh, uh, yeah, ecological value. Um, and the other thing, yeah, so, I don't know about impact investing because I often think it's less bad. Mm -hmm. um, so the, I, it's I follow, and then I talk to impact investors say like, oh yeah, we you want to invest? Okay, nice. What 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 are your goals? You want maximize impact? Okay, yes, we want to maximize impact as well. So then, okay, let great. You give me one million euros, and then I'll give you 
10 million butterflies in return. That's maximum impact. Do you want it? No, no, I want it. And then I feel like, ah, okay, but so therefore I, yeah, I, or I, maybe that would be, the, I haven't met the, the, like the really long-term focused impact investors that are, are uh, not in a way you could say like, yeah, okay, maybe your horizon is a bit longer, but what is the right horizon? So what would be a perfect investor for you if like you need money to to grow what yes. would be the ideal way for me i think uh, as uh money like as a tool. crowd crowd sharing uh, so now at the moment we're we're mostly bootstrapped and loans um uh and yeah of course there will be a, a point that that we want to grow faster and and on the other i read the book uh, the secret life of trees and if you read that book and read business and everywhere it says trees, then it's a great business book on organic growth. <laughs> and the, so we, we also don't believe in like injecting growth hormones. Yeah, uh, even though you did the, the growth hacking course while you were yes. setting up this. Yeah. But then again, it's, it's like on own, so it's difficult like on, on, on injecting big, uh, uh, like a growth hormones uh, but if, for us if we would go into to uh, investors I, I believe in I would l rather have a whole crowd of consumers investing a bit uh, so share share funding would for our business be a great because also because the share funders are ambassadors and our customers and our customers and like in this the way you're currently set up do you need like it's a relatively fast turnover. It's relatively, it's something mm -hmm. you need to invest for 10 years before your agroforestry system like starts yielding, etc. Like, do you, with the loans, are you able to fund it until now? Is it easy between brackets to get loans from banks, etc., just to keep going? Yeah, so getting loans from banks is not easy because we're a startup and yeah. not bankable yet. Uh, but in the Netherlands, we, we, had, uh, we had some funding from really nice green initiative with, with like really. Uh, nice terms. Nice, really soft terms. Uh, this, so that's great. But we want to transition. We want to become like bankable, and then and then have a bank loan. Um, Just a credit line too. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, because it's yeah. So the we don't need really big investments uh, anymore. In the yeah. beginning, we need we had some investment to to, to build up this whole processing uh, thing. Uh, and yes, if we would go into like a whole uh, like bottling everything ourselves, then of course. Of course. But then I'll, I think yeah, that's also can also be done with the share funding. Yeah. Um, yeah, we like uh, Patagonia as a as a uh, so we really long term focused and. Uh, Steward owned at the end or at donated end, to yeah. a foundation. And maybe yes, and maybe so. So if we if we'll go into. Uh, uh, in raising more capital, then we'll, we'll do it on a steward-owned way. And if we flip the question and put you in control of, uh, of a lot of money, and of yeah. course we can have the debate if, if uh, let's say, a billion euros should be concentrated, but let's say it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like somehow, I don't know, somewhere in your family, somebody built a, a, a big crazy business or somebody just gives it to you. It has to be invested. There's one condition. Yeah. What would you focus on? I'm not saying, uh, as I, I always repeat, I'm not looking for exact dollar or euros, no, amount, but no, I'm no, looking no. for what yeah. people like you in the field, like, okay, now we take you out of the field for a second because you need to be in the office. Um, what are priorities on your list of what you would invest in or what you would love to invest in that maybe doesn't even exist yet, but where would you prioritize significant money? Because this is a yeah. lot of money. It's nothing at the same I time. I think I would divide it so... so from, so what we do as a wildland is, is creating this combined zone from the uh, uh, common land uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. I think I would, would uh, the ha half would go to creating brands, vertically integrated brands that promote a combined zone. Mm -hmm. So combined or, is really like, just for, for is really like there's the, the wild yeah. nature. Or where still ecology and economy meets. Meet. Uh, so that, that that both get so it's still farming and it still it still needs to be work econ economically. But uh, the, the, the ecological aspects are e important. So, like, yeah, agroforestry is a way of, of uh, uh, combined zone. I would biodiversity say. strips. Yeah, biodiversity strips. Strip farming. Or integrated, yeah. yeah, strip cropping, all these things. 
Uh, so, or I would say like I'll, I'll scale uh, Wilderland to the whole world, <laughs> like, like uh, and we we'll start in Germany, then Denmark, and and like all Western Europe. I think every country can uh, uh, would benefit from uh, from a local local diversity. yeah local Wilderland yes, yeah. Uh, uh, initiative. So, Half. or or uh, uh, would uh, uh, invest in in already existing brands and help them. Uh, vertically integrate and, and and source more local and source more regeneratively but what you often see is that brands they only focus on the commerce and then where whatever their products come they couldn't care less uh, yeah oh yes it's organic but come on uh, uh, let's uh, be more ambitious Do you and see then the other is... half i would uh, I, I think that the nap rewilding in the uk like uh, invest in the natural zone Mm -hmm. and, and, and look into ways, may, uh, can we create a business model on the natural zone, like NEP in the UK did, um, and maybe buy uh, highly degraded uh, lands or farms and, and rewild them, and, and look into ways like how can ecotourism, or what, what, how can we develop the business model on the natural zone? So where, so where uh, it's mostly about ecology and a, a little bit about uh, uh, financial return. So looking at the four zones, you wouldn't focus on the farming, farming, highly intensive zone. No, too not much. on the economic yeah. Yeah, uh, zone. Yeah, not too much. But I, because I think if we can prove that the, the, especially the combined zone can work and that there's great business in the combined zone, I think it would. Uh, Merch. A lot of yeah, would, a lot of consumers would the, the market would 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 go big, and then if the markets go big, farmers will follow. And you mentioned like investing in already existing brands. Do you see that as an opportunity? Because there are of course challenges there, but at the same time they have a lot of things already in place. Like yeah. starting from scratch is super useful and super difficult. Yeah. And and so, but at the same yeah, like how yeah, would you see that? I yeah. As we have the Wilderland brand, it's for, I think it's for us easier yeah. to, to, to start Wilderland in every, because we, we, we could be like what we learned in five years, we could do that in the first year mm -hmm. in, 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 in another country. So, but I think, yes, I think, uh, yeah, brands, they like, they have a big following and they have like, and they're by a great responsibility. So therefore it might be interesting in some countries to say like, okay, we'll, we'll partner with this brand and, and uh, and transition the brand towards uh, uh, regenerative practices, and then because then the people already have a relationship with that brand, and I think from there on it's it it could be easy to 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 start talking and 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 but be really ambitious, of course, and and say like okay, your old practices will forget them, we'll we'll start over, eh? do things on a way which we think today is logical. So yeah, way more regenerative, our forest or whatever, but use the, the the audience you already have and the, and the, and your brand power uh, to takes, tell this story. That takes that takes by time. Far, time yeah. to build that, yes. the following yeah. the trust. Yeah, and, and it's really yeah. expensive to scale a brand because then you need like mass media and what and and we 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 uh, choose the path of organic growth, which we believe in is really strong but then again if you have like one million uh, one billion then of course you can easily put some money into uh, um and they probably already have done that anyway. yes, like yes they've yeah. built up the, yes, they've built up the audience so you're saying the existing maybe not regenerative megaphones as in companies that have audience and brand not the, the white label that have yeah. that maybe have some margin as well to yeah. to to play with or space to slightly and, and then say, okay, how far can we push yeah. this? But of, and I would try both. And then yeah, yeah. Like, and, and after three years, I'm like, okay, yeah, skill Wilderland, Wilderland, or yes, this works with, with, with going into. With. But and, uh, another thing is like with uh, Wilderland, we only focus on culinary biodiversity. Yeah? So making nice, super tasty products out of biodiversity. I see also potential for cosmetic biodiversity because from all the plants we use as tea, you can make uh, uh, candles, shampoo, uh, cream, whatever. So that's cosmetic and, biodiversity. And the margins there yeah, are, are insane. So that's also huge potential. Uh, potential and also for fashion, you can dye, uh, you can make a yellow pigment out of chamomile, and so there are uh, there's a huge op uh, potential, I think for uh, for 
valuing uh, local biodiversity or valuing native plants in a completely different way and, and bringing them to market in a way with, that is regenerative. And a question we like to ask, inspired by John Kemp, where you think different than like, what do you believe to be true that others don't? And in this case, the others I would like to, let's look at the um, brands. Like if you go to, I don't know if you ever go to brand conferences or something like other, yeah. maybe the, the food startup space yeah. or the food, the, the hip ones. Yeah. Like where do you think fundamentally different uh, or what do you believe to be true that others don't? Um, yeah, I, I think in everything we do is, is like 180 degrees different than, than <laughs> <laughs> a, 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 a normal uh, a, a FMCG or fast moving consumer goods brand would work. Um, so, no economies of scale um, and local be, be, be inefficient product. on purpose in the process. You're, give, you're giving a lot of good quotes for, <laughs> for, for, for the title, okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it works. Yeah, and it works because it's a hell of a proposition. Because you say, this is a fully transparent product grown close by, bringing so back maybe that's it. birds like and butterflies. And, yeah. and, and that's because I think all the brands, all the, all the products coming from Monoland are like, um, uh, lacking zombie products with with no real ingredients lacking transparency nobody would yeah, like don't don't look into the chain because a few steps down the chain you you you'll be you'll scared of the, of the of the mono of fields and slavery, mono field yeah. and, and and bad uh, circumstances the people that work on it um so we say like it's eco ecology e ecologically it's super efficient Mm -hmm. So let's let, so and therefore it's a great uh, uh, proposition. And another thing is what we see in the I think in the regenerative field is mm -hmm. we focus we start focusing on biodiversity. We, we say biodiversity first, mm -hmm. and therefore we work with weeds, native plants. And what I see in a lot of a lot of uh, regenerative farms, they say like, oh, less mono is better. And then I and then I think yes, of course. It's uh, yeah, n not going into mono is better, and of course it's good for soil, whatever. But if you want to uh, uh, also improve the biodiversity aspects, then if you look from the ecological perspective, um, insects like they love native plants, and I compare it often to a library. So uh, you could say like the, the uh, agricultural field is now a library with one book rewritten and by Monsanto. Nobody wants that. You'll, you'll die if you read that book. But it's really easy to, to have a library with one book, uh, but there's nobody in that, in that library. And then it's okay. We want uh, to, people to read more books. Okay, what, how should we convert this library to a more interesting library? Yeah, oh, more different books. Oh, great idea. Um, I know some cheap different books. I'll, I'll, I'll bring them in and then, so, okay from uh, comics to, to novels, whatever. We'll fill the library with uh, a wide range of books. And then three years later, you come like, yes, of course, I see more people. And that's like the honeybee looking yeah, at yeah. the pictures. But then still, like, well, it's not this, this vibrant library we, 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 we hoped for. And then you look into these books and then you see the cover and it's like, yeah, this, these, these are really nice covers. But then you open it and then for the Netherlands, they're like, yeah, this is a Hungarian book. It's a German book. <laughs> Italian book. Doesn't yeah, our people sense. don't read. So that's the same thing with insects. Our, so the insects living in the Netherlands, they don't, mm -hmm. <laughs> they cannot work with a uh, Hungarian uh, plant because it's super specific. And that's what, why we say like, if you want to create this vibrant library full of life, work with local bestsellers. And then, yeah, it's, it's native plants mm -hmm. because our insects and these plants, they, they have coexisted for more than 12,000 years. And, and, and another great example is it on the American oak and the European oak. So the European oak is native in Europe. American oak was introduced uh, 300 years ago. From a human perspective, they're quite similar. You say like they're both oaks. Mm -hmm. And the American oak uh, is, has rewilded throughout Europe. You can find it in every forest. Uh, and, but if you look into the ecology, you see like in the American oak, so the non-native plant, there's only 15 insects living. One five, on, yeah. One five, wow. yes, one five insects on that tree. And if you look into the 
uh, European oak, it's more than 450. And some say even thousands. And that's a huge difference. And also this, is here, a we're, we're walking next. close, this is the Aronia bush. Mm -hmm. What is Aronia bush? Aronia is a, is a bush and every food forest, every agroforestry system in the Netherlands is planting Aronia. And it's uh, because it's a nice berry, not native. We have the black currant. The, nat the berries are quite similar, but black currant, yeah, old fashioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but from an ecological perspective, it's the same as the... So if you look at the, only a few insects on the Aronia. Black currant, more than 200. And you can make a, quite a similar product yeah. because they all taste like uh, uh, cassis. Or, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and then I think, okay, what, let's <laughs> promote native. native. And if there is a native alternative for a nice berry, and we have native berries, let's bring them to market, let's make them interesting uh, instead of the non-native ones and, that's and the, and the, and the, the problem with aronia yeah. is that already um, it is, is shown to be an invasive alien species so a lot of our um, uh, natural zones mm. are overgrown by this plant because it was introduced here for food and then i think the then, then again, we're creating the, a new problem. If yeah. More aronia is, is okay in agroforestry system between brackets, but not okay, actually, a lot more is not okay. But and then, because the, the birds, this berry, yeah. so it's a perennial bush, birds eat these, eat these and berries spread and spread it. And, and that's the thing, so a lot of people, that's why, and so we focus on native, and I don't care if you plant non-native, we focus only on native, but that, and that's also a thing, because we only think like, okay, does this make sense from an ecological perspective? And so we only curate our ingredients based on that. So, okay, is it, does it make ecological sense to promote this plant in this landscape? If not, then we'll, we'll, we'll not make a product out of it. And as a final, which usually leads to more questions, but question, if you had a magic wand and oh, you yeah. could change one thing overnight, what would it be? Yeah, I love this question. And I've, I've thought about this question a lot. <laughs> and yeah, I, so I would change the, so what? what uh, Sometimes it's better to do the spontaneous answer. Yeah. <laughs> a few weeks, until a few weeks ago, I thought make a synthetic fertilizer and pesticide super expensive. Mm -hmm. So expensive that the model will flip for organic but then I thought yeah then it will only promote organic not per se regenerative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now I think and it's uh, actually an experiment going on in Sweden from the dark lab matters they have they've, they've read a really nice article about it and it says we should go to a basic universal um, oh, what should I need to nutritional wait, wait one second you universal basic nutrient income Okay, send the article because we can yes, put it in the, it's, in the show it, notes. It's the best article I've read in, 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 in years. Okay. So, if, and the then, um, if you could promote, like make highly nutrient products more cheaper than non-nutrient, mm -hmm. then the incentive for everybody is, uh, so the market for, so cheap, the price is killing actually now. So oh. we, what we say is like, we as well, we, we compete with Monoland. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly price is 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 is, uh, decisive, is, is yeah. decisive and if you can go to a system where price is lower for food grown in uh, like in in diverse systems mm -hmm. so would you subsidize it would you are like you would lower the price and not higher the other price no I, yeah so would, yeah you can subsidize this by uh, taxing low nutritional mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the other prices would go up? Yeah, would go up. And so this would not go down effectively, but would... In this experiment, in the article, they said it can be even uh, cheap, uh, uh, free uh, in the end, the highest nutrition. Because, and then you have so like, like local, high, highly nutrient, highly diverse uh, landscapes with, with, with real food and all this zombie food with, with, with no real ingredients will be super, uh, because it's not healthy, it's, so mm -hmm. it will be super expensive. And this, they, they experimented with this. So, or this they, is they a start, thought. They will start experimenting. So this you get, I don't know, the 
super grass fat liver and butter and ex amazing herbs etc yes. and also if you look into like uh, the highest nutrient density then you need to eat in season and, and you diverse. need to follow yes super and diverse what super they say? 30 diverse 40 because vegetable 30 30 40 plants a week i think is the oh yeah and it, but like then Zoe, if you yeah. go into super local super nutrient dense then yeah these two weeks are best for gooseberries yeah. let's eat them now and and but you have to measure it which is i mean we've done two series on on the measurement of nutrient density and it's it's coming but still very tricky um but it's very i mean if you can lower that uh, the demand will, will yeah the, will so uh, the, so the, the, that's the magic one you need to yeah. sort yeah. this yeah. that if a uh, healthy diverse great uh, grown uh, products are cheaper than mono then uh, it you'll always be trying to be more diverse and more mm. nutrient dense if, if that can be a new system because now the system is yeah uh, you see like uh, it, it's easier to sell a product with fake ingredients uh, or with with uh, ultra processed ultra fruit, processed yeah. uh, coming from far away from monocle with, with, it's almost no food and if we can start revaluating like nutritional value and then you you uh, keep on trying to be more um, diverse on the field and and there's that piece on universal like that by definition it makes it more accessible like that's yes. often the case yeah with a lot of things like you can't compete on price and thus the people that need it most on the smallest budget are going to be the ones buying the cheapest calories because yes. of of price and education and access and stress and etc but where not the ones that go to the farmers market on saturday like that's yes. the least so, that, interesting so now group. you see only people that can afford it then can can eat healthy and you want to flip, huge divide. flip that script and that the magic one should sort and i and the, this article, well, we need to share it because yeah. then people can fully understand. Because I cannot really replicate it well, but yeah, this article is great, and they they they've set the first step, and I think, yeah, universal basic nutrition yeah, so is a right as well, especially with children, especially with like it's, it should be a right of access to really yes. nutrition, not a crazy amount, but enough, and then you can decide to do oh, your kombuchas, etc. But like the basics, yes, calories, it's almost like water is a human right i mean in some places not uh, but why food not and how and i that think work? health is a great uh, uh it appeals to everybody like eating good food i think and if you can make that affordable then it's fascinating everybody because, will, will yeah will. but it, because it has been we've been paying crazy amounts for food as well like the superfoods the crazy yes. wines the etc etc and we've known how bad the current food, si food system is to our health and our ecological health for decades yes, maybe yeah, and it's somehow been, it's been bloody impossible to yes. get out of that lock yeah. and i think with marketing it mm -hmm. can be possible but still it's it, it's Fine. only yeah. only one brand or a few brands making it work and and i think price is is, is killing us on this uh, thing do you see that now with like the lowering of the price of your iced tea for instance yeah. like that that like price elasticity is important let's say. yeah it's important yeah and so yeah it's important if you want to reach a bigger audience which you want yes we want diversity. so yeah. yes of course there's a group that that don't really care if they pay 20 years whatever more yeah. because they they love the story and they love the product but of course if you want to grow and become more uh, mainstream which we want, of course. So we, we, so yes, our prices are premium, but it's not that we we will we do not want to create a premium brand. We want this is the way to start. So and to pay and, farmers, yeah, yeah, to pay and 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 we hope at one point the the system will change and or true cost account whatever. Then of course, then we would be super cheap because like all the benefits for society, like so we uh, we put the so uh, in our model the consumer pays the price. So it's not the not nature, not the farmer, not the people working on it paying the price. Have but you the done consumer. like comparison with other kombucha brands or other tea brands? If you do, if you would calculate the real the real cost, like true cost accounting. Yeah, compared to you we haven't done that yet because it's super difficult uh, and, pay and yeah, expensive and measuring biodiversity is is, is like good luck yeah, uh, yeah that's uh 
Uh, and yeah, we are a bit more expensive. And then I think, yeah, like, I won't name the, the brand, but there are a lot of premium brands, the Nestle coffee, whatever, with the, the big uh, actors promoting. So it's, <coughs> it's, pre <laughs> yeah, it's premiumly sold and it's bad product. So then I think, why not sell premium with good product? That, so it, 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 so it that can will be, be a target of your, go back to the fund, taking the premium brands that currently are able to sell for a premium price because of marketing. Yes. And somehow are not premiumly sourcing at all. I mean, they're doing some work, etc., but yeah. really the bare basics, yeah. just because they're scared that they're not going to have coffee anymore. Yeah. And say, okay, what if we actually use all that margin you're making yes, and, <laughs> and, and shovel it to the farmers? Shovel it to the farmers <laughs> and see what happens then. But then, of course, the, the shareholder yeah, will be yeah, like, yeah. oh, what the... But you're the shareholder then, so yes, then it yes, changes. Yeah, 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 then it's, yeah, so I think that... Uh... Fascinating. Thank you so much, Matthijs, for inviting us here because I reached out and I said, shall we do it somewhere on the land? And your first answer was Schevinkoven. And I'm very happy to have walked in the concert of, uh, of a lot of birds, a lot of insects. We walk through some fields where we are... Uh, I'm not saying attacked, but definitely interrupting a lot of uh, busy insect lives. And I also uh, saw some rabbits. Rabbits we saw, we saw a deer, uh, a lot of different herbs, plants and flowers. And uh, thank you for, for this deep dive or sh shallow dive, depending <laughs> on, uh, on your point of view, into uh, how to make biodiversity super tasty. And uh, this is for the inner crowd. Of course, the, the rest is nature restoration, super tasty. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is a pleasure. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. For the show notes and links we discussed in this episode, check out our website, investinginregenerativeagriculture.com forward slash posts. If you like this episode, why not share it with a friend or give us a rating on Apple Podcasts? That really helps. Thanks again and see you next time.